Hi, I'm Ryan Moody. For this week's blog post, uh, we're going to show you how I go about my non-skid flooring in my boats. I've been doing these for around about 25 to 26 years now. Uh, we don't use carpet, no aluminium floors, nothing like that. They get very hot. Uh, this method is uh, fiberglassing and uh, finishing off with a flow coat with a non-skid finish. The flow coat um, does not get very hot in the summer months, so you can lay fish on the deck and it doesn't burn your feet. So um, we'll get underway and show you how we do it. Now to start off with, we'll just quickly run through the whole process first. Uh, what I've done is I've got my ply, I've cut out my pieces, my four floor sections here to go in the boat. I've taken them off a template off the old floor. Uh, if it's the first time you're doing it, well, you'll have to find a chippy mate or a cabinet maker or someone you know that'll help you uh, be able to cut them out successfully. That's one thing I can't really help you with. But, um, but the fiberglassing part, this is, a, um, this is how I do it. What we've basically done is I've cut all my pieces out here now, I've got them ready to go. What I've done is the, on the undersides, I've beveled the edges, so 45 degrees, not all the way up to the top though, from about halfway down. And that's because I have welds along the floor line, around the sides of my boat. Now in some cases, uh, you'll also have aluminium stringers in some boats. So sometimes you may have to make a little cutout and or just an angled piece underneath there where it uh, touches the side of the boat because you want this floor to be screwed down tight to your stringers. You don't want them to be, the edges to be lying on top of a weld. So that's why we just put a little beveled edge under the bottoms. So we go around and do the bottoms wherever it touches the edges, not in the middles where the two join, just on the outsides. So what we do is then on the underneath side, I've already done them, we've coated that with polyester resin and we've thickened it up using a uh, thickening agent or talc, talcum powder, industrial talc. Um, so I've already done the undersides. So shortly I'll show you how we mix it all up and get it underway. So, and then, then we turn it all over like we've done now and we're ready to put the glass on the top. This is the top side. So we've sealed the bottom side with uh, polyester resin and now we're going to get ready to actually uh, brush on the, the, the top side and start rolling in the mat. When it comes to the resin, I like to do it in just under two litre lots. So ice cream buckets make a perfect uh, container for these. Uh, that way I know exactly how much uh, catalyst to put in later on. There are measurements for catalyst, you can get that off the internet. But uh, I find for just under two litres of polyester resin, uh, around about a Coca-Cola bottle cap full of um, catalyst is enough to uh, set it off and that's about the perfect amount you need. Uh, do not do it in rainy weather or very high humidity if you can help it. During the dry time of year is your best time of year to do this sort of thing. To start with I'm going to th thicken up my polyester resin. I don't want it too runny. Um, I want it th nice and thick and that way it'll, you'll get a heavier coating. You might use a little bit more in the long run but you'll get a heavier coating and um, which is what you want coating ply that's going to get wet all the time. Uh, we're using exterior ply or um, otherwise known as marine ply. Uh, that's your best to use. You can use structural ply. M might pay just to give it an extra coat of polyester resin uh, on the underneath side. Um, it'll make it last a bit longer. So what we do first is we use a flattening agent otherwise known as industrial talc. It's a fine powder and that thickens it up. So we mix that in. Put a fair bit in first. Stir him up. It'll take a while. Okay, still a little bit runny, so what I'm going to do is just keep adding a bit more and more and more until it just gets not too thick, so it's just dripping off the end of the uh, mixer there, just nice and gloggy. So as you can see, it's still a little bit runny there, still dripping off rather quickly. So we're going to uh, keep adding more. Okay, this is just getting a little bit gluggy now. That's about how we want it. Don't want it dripping off there like water, just becoming a little bit gluggy. So just under two litres, so I've almost used around about half of a um, hundred grams. So about 50, 60 grams I've used um, in that uh, just under two litres of resin. Now we're going to move on to um, fiberglassing the matting down to the top side of our floor. Um, I've already gone through 
and cut all the uh, sizes. Um, just allow a few millimetres over each side and either end. Um, if you leave a whole heap hanging over, it just becomes a little bit hard to handle and you've got to trim a whole lot off at the end and the resin will run down through it and it makes it a lot harder to trim. If you've only got a couple of millimetres to trim off the edge, it's easily done with a grinder. So we're going to move on to that now. This is what you basically need. You need your stirrer, put your resin, your catalyst. Your catalyst is what sends it off. It'll go hard over 10 hours, 6 to 10 hours, depending on your weather. Once again, in real humid or rainy days, try not to do it. Um, it's best done during the dry time of the year. That's when it goes off the best. Uh, fiberglass roller, very important. That's going to be used to roll the resin into the mat. So it goes right through and gets rid of all the air bubbles. And of course, just a simple old brush. It doesn't have to be a good paint brush, just a standard brush. And of course, don't wear your Sunday best. Just wear a few old clothes for doing this, or even overalls. If the fumes get to you and you don't like the fumes, put a mask on. It doesn't bother me too much. We're in a ventilated area here. And uh, I don't think they hurt you too much, these sort of fumes, but um, unlike paint. So uh, we'll give it a crack. Now, I'm not an expert fiberglasser, um, but I've worked with quite a few people over the years that are, and they've taught me quite a bit. Um, you can get your measurements for your catalyst. This is what sends off your fiberglass resin, your polyester resin. That's what makes it hard. So you do have your measurements on there, but I find for just under two litres, um, a simple Coca-Cola or a water bottle lid full is plenty for that amount and uh, doesn't set it off too quick and, and doesn't um, take its time either. So it's just that right amount. Uh, if you get stuck, just use that as a rule. So firstly, we're going to mix in our catalyst. Now I'm going to mix him in. It should go a greenish colour as you're stirring it. It goes from blue to green. There we go. It's just starting to change colour there now. That's just nice. Give it a good stir. Wipe that off with a rag, put him away. Now what we do, we lay our pieces of fiberglass chop strand in place, folding back to about halfway. Don't worry about the little hairs, that'll uh, blend in. What we start off with is, this, I've thickened this up with the uh, thickening agent or your talc. Just gonna brush this around, nice and thick, right over to the edges. Okay, the site supervisor, Roxy, she seems to think things are going all right. So we'll just keep spreading this on, nice and thick. All that to the edges. Okay, now we're gonna fold that back. Just make sure it's over the ends. In the right spot. Okay, now from that halfway area, I'm going to give another good coat on top. Always make sure you put a big sheet of plastic on the ground or some sheets or spill mats for like painters use. Nice and thick. Now using the fiberglass roller, we roll all the fiberglass in, right out to the edges. You'll see the edge come through there right on the end. Get all the air bubbles out so you see no white bits. It's got to be all green. Don't want any bubbles under there, otherwise it can delaminate and lift on you later on. This is quite a process and will take some time, but do it properly. And if you've got your mixture right, it's not going to go off on you. You'll have time to do half the panel first and then do the rest of the panel afterwards. Any white areas, just give them a good rub over. 
and then try and keep them nice and straight. Sometimes you can push a bit of resin towards areas that might need a bit extra. Okay, I've done this half, and we're just going to fold it back a little and get the brush underneath it. Another coating on, underneath that floor, lay it back down, roll all that top in, roll it in good so there's no white patches, and uh, especially around the edges, and uh, then we let it dry. We'll come back to it later. Next thing we do, after we've glassed it, we've glassed all these sheets now, and what I've done is I've gone along with a jigsaw and I've just trimmed off the excess glass around the edge and then with a grinder I've just neatened it off so it just comes back to touch the edge of the timber. Be careful you don't over grind it, you don't want to go and exposing the timber again. So what we do then is um, just mix up another coat of epoxy, uh, polyester resin, and uh, just go around the edges of all of your timbers and underneath and that just helps reseal the edges. Now for the real messy part. We've already done one messy part with the fiberglass. What we've done here, we've prepared all our boards, they're all fiberglassed on top. We've gone around the edges, beveled them, then we've gone around and sealed them with more polyester resin, just in case we rub through the timber when we trimmed it all off. And I've got a few old boards here from my casting deck which are still okay, so I've just given them a sand back, and we're just going to go over the top of them with some more flow coat. So uh, this is the messy part here. What we've done, Two tins, two four litre tins of polyester flow coat. Get them in a big bucket with a sealed lid because you can keep that for later on. I know I'm going to use approximately six litres for all this through uh, experience in the past. So two full tin, two four litre tins in the uh, a ten litre bucket. Then what we're going to do next is add our tinter. I want a bit of a bluish coloured floor. So I've got some uh, navy blue tint here. This is polyester um, paste. It's just a colouring, so I'm just going to pour in a few teaspoons of that to start with. We can darken it up a little bit later if we need to. Okay, now we also want to make this nice and thick, so we've got some more of the um, talc, industrial talc. We'll pour in about or oh, start off with that two containers like that and then give him all a good mix up Okay, I want my floor a little bit darker than that. It's a little bit light for me. Um, during the day, you don't want refraction, so always use a tinter. If you want like a grey floor, buy some black tinter. That'll make you uh, a nice grey floor. And as I say, it depends on how much tinter you want to put in as to how dark you make it. So we're going to put a bit more of this in. Just about run out. Now we've added a bit more tinder to make it a bit darker. Also, we want to put some more talc in. I want this really thick. So when we lay it on the boards nice and thick and we run the texture roller through it, it stands up like little hairs. If it's too runny, it'll flatten out and not get the nice non-skid finish. put some bit more of this good stuff in because it's not quite thick enough yet. It looks a bit like cocaine. We'll get a few straws, a few beers and we'll have a party in a minute. Ryan Moody Fishing does not endorse drugs. I don't think I'll like the result though. <laughs> Won't be pleasant. <laughs> hey, it's working already. Still not thick enough so keep on going until she gets gluggy. Probably around about three kilos of talc will be uh, the final measure for eight litres. Right. Now we're going to mix the catalyst into the polyester flow coat. Polyester flow coat is actually the 
white outside coating on fiberglass boats. It gets sprayed on the mould first before they actually lay in the fiberglass and once it comes out of the mould you've got that lovely white finish that's polished up. So that's what polyester flow coat is. So what we're going to do, the same with resin, it's got the same mixture. Um, you're looking at around 1% 1, 1 is your catalyst mixture. So in other words what I've done is I've got it in three lots of two litres here now uh, or just under, had under two litres and uh, what we're going to do is because it's two litres it's going to be 20 mils of catalyst. So it's 1%. So 1 litre, 10 mils, 2 litres, 20 mils. Work on that. Uh, a simple medicine jar, kids medicine jar with your mixtures on it, it's perfect. That's all you need. Now we're going to mix one at a time. Don't put catalyst in all your three containers and, and mix them up in one go. Do one at a time because you want to spread it on nice and quick. Just, just spread it out really thick over the boards is all you need to do. The longer you leave it with the catalyst in it in a solid state, not a solid state, but a big liquefied area, is you got a, it's more of a chance of it going off and turning into a big ball of jelly. You spread it out, it won't do that. So the whole idea is mix your catalyst in, do one lot first, spread it all out, and uh, then go on to another one, and then another one after that. Okay. Got 20 mil catalyst there. Cheers. <laughs> no, don't. It's very toxic shit. Okay, in she goes. Give her a mix. Right, that's the nice consistency we want. We've put enough talc in that one. See how it's a little bit gluggy now? It's not running off, it's dripping off. That'll help it stand up as it's drying when we run the texture roller through it. But it's very important we mix in the catalyst very well because it takes a bit longer to mix in when it's got so much talc in it. Okay, we're going to spread it on nice and thick. Get it all out there first. Just spread it all over the place nice and thick. And when you finish, you can just run around the edges with the paintbrush when there's not too much on it. Okay, we've done two boards with one two litre. Stipple roller on the end of a paint roller pole. Now we just roll it out as it's drying. Get this nice texture finish on it. Now, once you finish the floor, it um, should look like this, nice and stipply. Uh, simply put it back in your boat, mark out your stringers, drill your holes, countersink the holes, self tappers in, and either put a dob of Sikaflex or mix up some more resin around the top of the screw heads just to seal it. And uh, that's about it. Good job.